Hello, everybody. My name is Roberta Villarreal, and today I'm going to be presenting a talk called Feminism, the Patriarchy, and Everybody's Fight. So first, we have this quote by an Arab gender researcher and poet whose name is Freda D. And the quote goes like this. A man who fears being seen as feminine is a man who fears being treated the way he treats women. So this brings up a controversial idea. And it's like the thick line of how women are treated and how men are treated, like the inequality in the treatment of gender, the opportunities that gender has, and how free they are to live their life how they want it. And I ask you this audience, what do you think of the idea of sexism? Does it seem unreal and harmful to you? If you say yes, then you do see the signs of the patriarchy. So that thick line between the treatment of men and the treatment of women is the patriarchy. This means that men in our society are seen as superior beings or are the ones who demand more respect when in, re when in return, they're not giving that respect. So the respect doesn't go both ways. The patriarchy does not imply the fact that all men are seen as powerful. There is a strong definition of what a man should look like called toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity is like saying a man can cry or show emotions. He has to be strong, a dominant male, and the leader of the family. This is oppressive to society as a whole, seeing that it creates an unhealthy picture of how men should be seen as. Next, we have another quote by Farida D, and it goes like this. If my feminism intimidates your masculinity, ask yourself why your masculinity is contingent upon oppressing me. So this relates to the idea that the patriarchy is offensive to people. According to the newspaper called The Conversation, society is characterized by male dominance and systemic gender inequality have higher levels of violence against women. So this leads us to the point of what societies are characterized by male dominance. One clear example are stay-at-home moms. The fact that you're assuming the moms are the ones who stay at home, have no job, cook, clean, and take care of the children is sexist. Not only because a woman can choose if she gets a job or not, but also the fact that they are the ones who are supposed to be cooking and cleaning instead of both, both sides, like the partner and the couple as a whole. The dads should be allowed to be stay-at-home parents and the moms working parents or however the family wants, and this shouldn't be controversial. Adding to this, when a dad is the one who stays at home, there is a lot of backlash. Like people call him weak and submissive when in reality, like the mom and the dad are doing something beneficial for their families. This enforces the idea the patriarchy has that the moms were initially the ones who were weak and submissive. So another example of like the injustices and the patriarchal system in our society are the girls unable to go to school. So this is a chart that I made and the data is according to UNICEF. So the gray part represents the 132 million girls out of school. The yellow part represents the 67.4 million girls out of upper secondary school. The purple part represents the 34.4 million girls out of primary school. And the pinkish red part represents the 30 million girls out of lower secondary school. So the barriers that these girls face that prevent them from attending schools or getting good education can be child marriages, poverty, violence, family issues, and the situation their country faces. This doesn't necessarily mean that the patriarchy is to blame fully, but it is such a big obstacle since many countries don't see their girls' education as important. So when they're limiting their education, the girls are, in, are forced to succumb to gender stereotypes, which is something we will see, and the idea of how patriarchy wants, how patriarchy wants society to be. So besides studying and working, the, besides studying and graduating, the working industry has also signs of the patriarchy. So there is such thing as a gender pay gap. In, in 2020, for every dollar a man was paid, on average, a white woman was paid 85 cents. Let's take that in. So you have a job 
for a man and you're paying him, I don't know, X amount of money. But for the woman, you're paying her less than the man. So in the, J in the same company for the same job, you're paying a man less for the same job a woman. You're paying a man more for the same job a woman is essentially doing. So the injustices are that women are seen as inferior, incapable, which can lead to unequal opportunities with unfair discrimination. Next, we have another quote, and this is by J.D. Anderson, who is an Australian writer and feminist. And it says, feminism isn't about making women stronger. Women are already strong. It's about changing the way the world perceives that strength. So she, what I got from this quote was were gender stereotypes. So these stereotypes were created by society long ago to limit the opportunities that people have for different things. So these stereotypes are deeply rooted in the structure of the patriarchy and were created to define people as something they are not. So essentially, it's sexism. So you've heard me mention sexism quite a few times, but maybe I haven't given a clear explanation on what it is. So sexism is the prejudice, stereotyping, or discrimination, which is usually against women, it doesn't have to be against women because of their sex or gender. Going back to these stereotypes, you have personality traits. A woman can be portrayed as emotional, submissive, and quiet, while a man can be portrayed as self-confident and aggressive. And then there's occupations. People tend to assume a teacher or nurse is a woman, while a man is a pilot, doc doctor, or engineer. And lastly, physical appearance. Women are expected to be graceful and thin, while men are expected to be tall and muscular. And inside of that, there is a stereotypical manner how they're supposed to groom and look. Women with dresses and makeup, and men with pants and short hair. All this leads to unrealistic ideas on how people should act, what they should wear and how they should be around other people. Some ways to break these social stereotypes are to learn about the negative effects it can do to someone and call out the person who is being harmful or rude towards someone else and be cautious of what you say. It all comes down to what a person chooses to say. And I suggest that you take the time to encourage the people around you that they don't have to be like a certain image to be loved. However, we do have examples of women who have defied these social and gender stereotypes and accomplished great things. I have three examples for you today. And the first one is Professor Rangari Mathai was the first African-American woman to win a Nobel Peace Prize for her contribution to sustainable development, democracy, and peace. Second, we have Dr. Marie Maynard Dolly was the first black woman in the United States to earn a PhD in chemistry. And lastly, Leslie Feinberg, who is a transgender writer and social activist who dedicated much of her life to solving transgender issues and raising awareness on gender studies. These women have shown that stereotypes don't necessarily mean that what is said is true and that there is a lot of difference between a stereotype and a reality. And we have this quote, which is the last quote, but I'm not done yet. It's by Letty Cotton Pogrebin, who is an American writer and activist. And the quote goes like this. When men are oppressed, it's tragedy. When women are oppressed, it's tradition. So this enforces the idea that the patriarchy is the one to blame. When you go out and see a feminist, and before you open your mouth to say anything, Think about this, a feminist means wanting equity, not superiority to men. There are some people who abuse the power, but what feminists want is to be recognized for their work, live in non-abusive environments, and live happy lives. They want women of color to be included, LGBTQ women to be included, women from minorities to be included, trans women, and every type of women. And since there have been so many centuries of oppression for women, so many centuries of wrong stereotypes and harsh opportunities, we must all speak, and speak out and demand change because it is long overdue. If you wanna be a feminist, please be one that will accept everyone, whether they are different from you or just have different beliefs. 
because feminists want a society where everyone is treated with equity. They want justice. Be supportive of those who need support. Challenge the stereotypes. Treat everyone with respect and dignity. Be creative and think outside of the box while finding solutions. And lastly, teach others about the problem and how they can help too. Challenge the stereotypes of men not being feminists. If you feel that there is need for change, you can defy the stereotype because you would want benefits for everyone. Being a feminist as a man does not mean you are weak. It means you are strong enough to seek change. And to end this talk for real now, I leave you with a few questions. What are you going to do? Are you going to treat women with respect and dignity they deserve? Are you going to treat everyone how they would want to be treated? If you feel the need to do something, my friend, you believe in equity and justice, and you should most definitely stand against the patriarchy. Thank you.